Hey Math 31, here we are with example seven. So we're going to find all of the zeros of this quartic. And again, if it's a quartic, that means I'm going to have four zeros. They might not be distinct. There might be some multiplicity with them, but I'm gonna go for it. Now, if I didn't have a calculator, here's where I would start. So back, back in my day, when I, when I was in high school, this is how we would start. We would take all of the factors of our constant. So if I wanna get P, right, it would be the factors of six, and in this case, that's plus or minus one, two, three, and six. And then I would find my Q's, right, which is gonna be the factors of my lead coefficient. So that would be one, two, oops, plus or minus two. Plus or minus four and plus or minus eight. And then from there, I would make my list of possible rational zeros. And this is gonna be a long list, I have a feeling. Possible rational zeros. Okay, so let's see, I would go one over one. So plus or minus one, and then we would have one half, one fourth, one eighth, all right, if I do the twos, I'm gonna just put my list here. So it'd be plus or minus two. Two over two is one, I already have it. Two over four is a half, I have it. Two over eight is a fourth, I have it. All right, three over one needs to be in my list. Three over two needs to be in my list. Three over four, and so does three over eight. All of those need to be in my list. And then let's do six. Six over one is six. I need it. Six over two, three. Six over four is three halves, and this is three fourths. Okay, so how many did I narrow this down to? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh, just 20. So you potentially have 20 numbers that you could use synthetic division with, and then hopefully a couple of those work. So I think you can start to see that that is not something I want to do. And again, if I had to, I could. At least this is narrowing it down to 20 numbers. It's not any number as possible. But I'm going to use technology. So let's go ahead, get our calculator up to speed, and let's plug this function in. So let me modify this. I already had a quartic in there. So we have 8x to the fourth plus 26x cubed. All right, plus 39x squared, plus 26x, plus six. And let me make sure I didn't make a typo. So 8x to the fourth, plus 26x cubed, plus 39x squared, plus 26x, plus six. All right, and it's good to just check that you didn't make a typo, especially when these numbers are so large and there's so many terms. All right, I'm gonna hope that I can see a couple of zeros. Ideally, I'd like to see at least two. If I could see two, I could knock this down to a quadratic with synthetic division. So let me hit zoom six. Let's see what we got. Ooh. I'm not sure. That is pretty tight in there. So let me zoom in, because I can't really tell what happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in, which I hit the zoom button and option two. And then there's a little blinky. I'm gonna move it closer to that part of the x-axis. So let's see what we have going on here. Oh wow, I do have two zeros. You can barely see them. They're super close to each other. They're somewhere between negative one and zero. All right, so I'm gonna guess that's negative one half. That looks like negative one half to me. But let's say I wasn't sure. This is where I would have to use blinky when I try and calculate the zero, here's what I mean. You see a little blinky showing up? I'm gonna use the left and right option here because I, I really don't know what number's in between there. It's so teeny. So I'm gonna find this leftmost zero. Let me go left of it. All right, so for this first zero here, this first x-intercept, I'm this, this flashing point, blinky, is to the left of it. I'll hit enter. Let me move to the right of it. So I'm to the right of it because I've crossed to, um, I've crossed the x-axis and now I can see my y values are negative. So I'm on the right of it, I'll hit enter. Enter through guess. Oh, and it looks like it was negative 0.75. So that means it was really negative 3 fourths. So I found a zero 
I found one of them at negative three-fourths. That is on my list of possible zeros, but man, it would have been a while before I tried that. All right, now let me try and find the other one, which I think is at negative one-half. So let me do second trace, option two. Again, I'm gonna use the blinky. So I, I wanna find this second zero, and so I'm gonna be to the left of it, which I am. You can see I'm left of it, I'll hit enter. Let me move to the right of it. Again, as long as my Y values are now positive because before they were negative. Um, let me hit enter, enter through guess. And sure enough, it is negative one half. Wow, okay, so we have some, some pretty tiny zeros and these are gonna be my starting points for my synthetic division. Now, it doesn't matter what order you go in. You could do negative three-fourths first or negative one-half or vice versa. I'm just gonna start with negative three-fourths. All right, so this, and I'll put here, I got these from calculator. All right, so again, if there's no calculator, use synthetic division on this list of numbers till you find a couple that hit. I was able to find two from my calculator, which is great, because since I could find those two, I know I'm gonna be able to knock this down to a quadratic and either factor it or use the quadratic formula eventually. All right, so watch what happens when you use these fractions with synthetic division. So I've got negative 3 fourths, and let me see, my powers of x descend, I don't skip any, don't need any, need any placeholders. Okay, here we go. Um, eight. So three, negative three fourths times eight is negative six. Twenty minus six is twenty. Negative three fourths times twenty would give me negative fifteen. Um, Thirty nine minus fifteen would give me twenty four. Oh, and by the way, I should get a zero here. Um, negative three fourths times twenty four. Let's see. Twenty four divided by four is six. Six times negative three is negative eighteen. 26 minus 18 is 8. Um, negative 3 fourths times 8 is going to be negative 6. Yep, and 6 minus 6 is 0. That checks out. And it should. Okay, so I want you to, I want to take a look at where we are right now because we're, we're finding all of our zeros. So let me show you what's happened. Because something funky tends to happen when you're putting fractions into synthetic division. So if negative 3 fourths is a 0, then x plus 3 fourths was a factor of my original polynomial. And here's my remaining factor. All right, if I took out one degree, instead of going quartic, I'm gonna go cubic, so I have 8x cubed plus 20x squared plus 24x right, plus 8. All right, now, I want you to take a look at this, this second factor over here, this polynomial here. Do you see the GCF in there? All right, what do all four of these terms have in common? They have four in common. And let's factor out that four because something, again, something funky is happening. If I factor out a four from this polynomial, all right, I would have then 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x plus two. Make sure you believe me so far because the next part's about to blow your mind. All right. So this no longer has a GCF, but because this has a fraction, I can opt to multiply these two terms together. All right, I'll just save this one. But if I multiply these two terms together, I'm gonna to distribute the four to the x, and I'm gonna distribute the four to the three fourths, and then all of a sudden those fractions will be gone. So if I multiply these two terms together, I'm going to have four x plus three, and then I've got two x cubed plus five x squared plus 6x plus 2. All right, from there, I'm, I, I've got a cubic to break down. Let's break it down. I know negative 1 half is another 0. So I'm going to scooch this page up so we can start working on that. All right, so let's see what we've got here. At this point, let me draw another separator. All right, let's put negative 1 half in the house and then our co uh, coefficients are two, five, six, and two. And again, I should be getting a zero here. We already saw that play out on the calculator, so let's, let's try this. All right, two comes down, negative one half times two, negative one. This is four. 
negative 2, this is 4, negative 2, and sure enough it's 0. And I just want you to take note. Look at these numbers, 2, 4, and 4. They have something in common. All right, we're going to be factoring out yet another, another thing. All right, so let's, let's go see what we have now. So f of x, we knew it was, actually I'm going to give myself more room. I'm going to start at the top. Okay. So f of x, we already knew we had a 4x plus 3. Now because of negative 1 half, I will have x plus 1 half. And my remaining factor is 2x squared plus 4x plus 4. But again, this has a GCF of 2, so let me take out that GCF. We've got 4x plus 3, x plus 1 half. I've got a 2, and then I am left with x squared plus 2x plus 2. All right, no more GCF here, but let's multiply these two terms together so I can get rid of the fraction. And I, again, I need to distribute. So 2 times x, 2x. Two, 2 times 1 half, 1. So now I'm finally getting to f of x is equal to 4x plus 3 times 2x plus 1 times x squared plus 2x plus 2. So I'm starting to get further and further into breaking down my polynomial. Started with a quartic, I'm down to linear factor, linear factor, quadratic factor. Now the thing about this quadratic factor, I can't break it down. There's no way to factor this into linear factors. So I'm going to have to, this is, I will say this is prime as is, I can't do anything more to simplify this, but I'm gonna have to either use the quadratic formula or complete the square to solve this. So we cannot factor that term, oops, I don't know that that's how you spell factor. All right, so we can use the quadratic formula or you could complete the square to solve that. All right, so with that, let's, let's try and figure out what are my last two zeros. So I'm gonna scooch this up even further. I told you this problem's super intricate. All right. So here we go, let's try this. So I've got x squared plus 2x plus 2. I want to see when that is equal to 0. Let's use a quadratic formula. So I've got negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And this is all going to go over 2a. All right, so I've got negative two plus or minus the square root. Okay, two squared is four, four minus eight is negative four, all over two. Okay, so I am looking at negative two plus or minus two i over two. I'm gonna use my bunny ears, right? So this is actually gonna be negative one plus or minus i. So there are my other zeros. So if I want to factor this, all right, even though I just said I cannot factor, I can't factor over the real numbers. If I want to factor over the complex numbers, I could. But, well, and I, I'll do that in just a sec, but I do want to mention, so my zeros at this point, I have four zeros. I have one at negative three-fourths. I have one at negative one-half. I have one at negative one plus i. And I have one at negative one minus i. Now, which of those are actually x-intercepts? All right, just these two, negative 3 fourths comma zero and negative 1 half comma zero. These two are not x-intercepts because they don't cross the x-axis. We, we can't cross the x-axis if I'm talking about complex numbers in the real world. And last but not least, if you wanted to break this down, if you wanted to factor this just a little bit further, you could say f of x was equal to 4x plus 3 times 2x plus 1 times x minus, and we could use this first zero of negative one plus i, times x minus, the other one of negative one minus i, and you could break that down just a little bit more and say four x plus three, two x plus one, x plus one minus i, times x plus one plus i. All right. So that is a pretty intense problem. And that was just, that was one problem we did, okay? 
So you've got how you can you've got your four zeros, two of them turned into x intercepts, and if you wanted to break this function down uh, into two real factors and two complex factors, you could. All right. So with that, we're going to flip the page. We're going to do example eight, where we're going to find six zeros together. All right. I'll see you in a few. Bye.